Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage. Welcome back to a, another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity. I've got a little bit of an idea about what I want to get done today. I'm just quickly checking the macerator here because I want to make sure that we've got as many of the um, ingots sorted out as possible. I'm trying to make sure that we get a lot of them um, all down to the same type. Like We've got invar, invar iron, we've got tin, tin and tin. So we've got a lot of the IC2 tin. So we don't really want the Railcraft tin. We don't really want the Tinker's Construct tin. So what I should be able to do is if I put them back through the macerator, it should work. And then that will go and change them into a tin ore or tin dust. We'll be able to turn that tin dust back into tin ore at some point. This one shall work. We're just going to work our way through those. Anyway, what I want to do today is um, going to be a little bit uh, ender IO. And that's because somebody mentioned that a good thing to make is the uh, electromagnet, which would be really, really useful when mining. Now, the electromagnet is an ender IO um, piece of equipment. Pulls nearby items towards you. Uh, but in order to build that, we need uh, conductive iron, we need electrical steel, and we need to make this vibrant alloy. Uh, the vibrant alloy also requires um, energetic alloy. And as you can see, all of these alloys require the alloy smelter. So, we are going to build an alloy smelter. Because we don't have one of those yet. And this will be our first Ender IO machine. Now, it does use RF. Um, what we're going to try and do, hopefully, is um, we're going to connect it to our reactor and hope that it doesn't drain all of the power from it like the magma crucible is. Obviously, Ender IO is from a different mod, so it may work slightly better. We are still making energy here. So we'll connect it up and we'll see how it works. If it looks like it's pulling too much energy constantly from the reactor, then we will um, go ahead and put another uh, energy cell in between. So I think we'll use this floor. This can be our Ender IO floor. Why not? So first things first, let's just get the mining laser selected. Let's just make sure we are on um, low focus mode. So this is actually, this is the level of the reactor this is the level below so the cable should run directly down this wall and uh, we can see where the cable comes down the cable actually comes down on this side so it's one tile to the left of the elevator so if we go back up and we go one tile left of the elevator then somewhere behind here should be the cable not quite sure that we can reach it might have to take a block or two out there let's just go ahead and grab a uh, superheat block so we can actually get the um, actually get the the smooth stone back we'll do that again and we'll just have a normal low focus shot is this cable further through the wall than i think it is well that was a lot deeper through the wall than i thought it was anyway we can get at that so we need to get ourselves a Fluix cable, and brilliantly we can use our wireless terminal here. So we want to grab ourselves a... is it Fluix or is it Flux? Yeah, it's a, it's a Flux duct. There we go. So let's go ahead and use these things. And we want to bring them all the way out. Just before we do, we need to make sure that we've still got the space to reach in and put the rest of these blocks in. So there's one there. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and just pop that in. Fantastico, sorted. So, what do we need to do now? Well, I suppose what we need to do is actually build the machine. So, let's go ahead and have a look for the uh, the alloy smelter uh, and what we need for this. Well, four iron ingots, that's easy enough. Three furnaces, a cauldron, and a machine chassis. That requires some iron bars and some more iron ingots, which is easy enough. It also requires a basic capacitor. The basic capacity requires a copper ingot, some redstone, and some gold nuggets. So it's all stuff we should be able to make. So let's go in and use our wireless terminal while we're here. Might as well. And uh, go back and find the alloy smelter. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to um, grab the gold nuggets. So we do need to grab some gold so we should have some in here 
I really should turn off the, the linkage for the time being. Um, we don't need it to be... Right, standard search and not NIE synchro. So there is our uh, gold. A problem we have here, of course, is that the wireless terminal isn't a crafting terminal. So let us go and actually do this at an actual terminal, which will make life a little bit easier. So we can go and break that up and grab ourselves some gold nuggets. And then we need a copper ingot and some redstone. So we should actually have all the bits that we need in order to uh, build that. So let's just go shift click. And indeed we do. Not sure where we suddenly managed. Did I convert all of my gold into nuggets? Did I click the wrong button and convert every single gold bar I had into nuggets? Well, no, but I did the entire stack, which was a little bit silly. Um, fine. Well, I can just... Uh, whoops. Should be able to just turn them back into gold that way, shouldn't I? So if I go and right-click... And sometimes it lets me do it and sometimes it doesn't. There we go. That's fine. So we've got the capacitor sorted. Now we need some iron bars. Now can we skip that out because we don't actually have the iron bars. Or do we have iron bars? Must have some, some iron bars in there. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that. Do I actually have iron bars? Do I have a lot left over? Yeah, I do. Obviously built some for something else in, uh, in the past. And, um, well, that now allows us to actually build the machine chassis, I suppose. Oh, it's the machine chassis we've just built. Okay, we've got that bit. So we need to make ourselves a cauldron. Well, that's easy enough. So let's go and grab a cauldron. And we also need to make ourselves three furnaces, which is easy enough. So let's go and grab ourselves three furnace. So we should have everything we need there to build the alloy smelter. There we go. That was easy enough. Let's go and get rid of some of the stone and whatnot. So we'll go and put the alloy smelter down, and then we'll have a quick look when it's full, just to make sure it's not constantly drawing power from the reactor, because that'll be a bit of a pain. So it is starting to get power. It'll hold up to 100,000 RF. And when it's full, uh, we can actually increase the capacitor so that it, it will hold more. Not too sure how much power was in the uh, reactor now. It's probably going to completely drain it, but that's fine long as it's not running permanently yeah as you can see it's actually going qu down quite quickly but we did a have over a hundred um hundred thousand rf in the reactor so what i want to do is make sure that the alloy smelter is full as in full power and then see if it's still causing a drain if it's still causing a drain after it's at full power then we need to go and um put in an energy cell because that's the problem we were having with the magma crucible is even when it wasn't doing anything it still seemed to be using every last ounce of juice that the reactor was pulling through so we can actually put this into furnace mode as well uh what's that so that's alloys only furnace only we want we want to want this to be alloys only there we go it's at 100k so it's currently maxed so is the energy from the reactor still going down? If it is, then we need to put in an energy cell. It is still going down. So I think we are going to have to put an energy cell in. It's still, obviously, it's still drawing power. Not at a great rate, but it is still drawing power. So that is a little bit annoying. Now, we're going to have to move it, and that means we're going to lose the power that is in it, but that's fine. Uh, what do we need to take this down? A pickaxe. So we should be able to do it with the old, um, with the old mining laser, and it actually gives us it back. There we go. It shouldn't have the power in it, though, which is a little bit of a shame, but uh, we need to take out one uh, layer of the cable which you probably can't get back now. And uh, we need to go and make ourselves another one of those energy cells. I know we should have made more at the time. So let's just sleep things off. And we want to make ourselves... Uh, is it an energy cell or is it a power cell? Look, wrong box to type in because we are not on NEI synchronized. Energy cell. It is the leadstone one that we want 
I've forgotten how to make it already. Leadstone energy cell. Leadstone energy cell frame. Block of redstone, which we can make easily. Um, glass we should have. Lead ingots we should have. So we can make the frame. And then copper ingots we've got. The conductance coil we can make quite easily. So then we just go back to the energy cell. And there we go, we have our energy cell. Brilliant. So what we're going to do with that is we will go and put that in place. Now this is going to drain quite a bit of power from the um, from the thing. You will see that it is going up in power quite quickly. And it holds a lot of power as well. It holds 400,000 RF. So what I'm going to do, just to speed things up, I'm just going to go and put the reactor on to um, sort of quite high, high uh, output at the moment. Because this is going to empty the reactor out, as you can see. So let's just go up here. Let's go and uh, put the reactor on uh, full full whack for the time being. Let's drop down. And a uh, couple more things we'll do while we're here. Let's just make sure we keep this um, cyanide in there. Let's also make sure that we actually keep the reactor topped up. Because it saves us having to come out here too often. And we'll let the uh, energy cell fill up as quickly as it wants to. It does take a little bit of time. And there we are. You can actually see it's got these lines on it. We can see it's half full already. So we need to configure the, um, the outputs on this. So what I want is the... That's the bottom. That's the back. So the back is blue, which is input. We want the front to be an output, which is orange. So the front's going to be an output. It's taking in the full 200 RF per tick max. And as soon as it gets up to full, what we'll do is we'll reduce that down. And um, these things seem to work a lot better with the uh, with machinery. So we'll let that get up to full power. Obviously the reactor's working very, very hard at the moment. Fantastic. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll put this down in front. This should now start to receive power. Oh, it's actually at full power. Fantastic. The problem that I've got now, of course, which I've just realised, is I can't actually get at the... Um... Oh, I wanted superheat. I can't actually get at the box now which is a real pain so let's just take that out quickly and um, we want to reduce this down to maybe 50 RF per tick it's probably going to be enough so now that that's full I like how it actually kept the machine full when we removed it that was actually really good so are we still losing power let us um, just get rid of all this stuff so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, we're still losing power. So this is the problem with, with these blocks. They don't seem to work all that well. They keep drawing power even when we, we don't need them to. I think we need to get some kind of switch so we can turn these uh, devices off when we're not using them. This one I've actually got set to um, 50 RF per tick. Um... I might actually have to reduce it down a little bit. Reduce them all down a little bit just so that they're using less. They seem to be draining so much power. So it will work slowly for us. Let's go ahead and... Uh, are we still in um, superheat mode? Let's take that block out again. Uh, we'll leave it out probably until we get this working. Let's go ahead and put you down to zero for the time being. So... If I let you output power, see the power isn't going down. So what that's telling me here is that there's no, there's no, oh, it's output, not input, derp. There we go, output. Yeah, look at that. There's no input, which means there's no power coming in from the reactor. But it is set to 200. Let's make sure this is all correct. Yeah, I thought I got that right. So there's no power actually going out of the energy cell. So this isn't actually using any power at the moment. 
So our maximum output wants to be maybe 50. I think that's fair. There's no, there's no power going out, and we can prove that because if we turn off the input, the, but there's still an output, the power isn't going down, but there's no power coming in. So we know that this uh, device isn't actually using any power. And we can test that that theory works by doing the same thing on the one that's connected to the magma crucible. Because if we turn the input off, we can see that the power goes down because it's consuming more than it's using. Oh, thought I crashed it all there. But definitely did something it didn't like. Um, oh, wrong button. Oh, wrong button again. It's control. This makes this thing run very, very slowly, but that's fine. I don't need this thing to run quickly. It's, it's, it's going to fill that up slowly over time. Um, so the question is then, why are we using so much of our power? Where is it all going? We're using way more of it than I thought we would. Is this thing still going? Yeah, that's done as much as it can do. So what are we up to now? We, gain, we are now gaining power. There we go. Maybe it was because we had just too much stuff running at the same time. Do I want to leave this running at full power? It was on 30% before. And at 30%, it's still losing. Yeah, I'm not sure why this reactor runs uh, so inefficiently anymore. We're definitely going to have to do something to... Um, to change our current system. But the important thing is we've got the alloy smelter running. I think what we're going to need to do is is find some way to put certain machines on a switch so that we can actually turn off the um yeah, max max 20 RF per tick anyway. Uh, I think we need to find some way to actually be able to switch these machines off when we're not using them or to disconnect the power. Um, let us go ahead and just take that block out. As it uses a maximum of 20 RF per tick anyway, uh, we may as well go and um, decrease these to 20 RF per tick, which make things a little bit more sensible. So now we've got the smelter up and running, let's go and make some of the stuff that we need then, shall we? We want to make ourselves, uh, we probably won't get the entire thing done today, but we'll get some of it done. So let's go and have a look at the electromagnet here. Let's make this thing first. We need this vibrant crystal. We've got an emerald, so we need to make these vibrant alloys. And how do we make the vibrant alloys? Well, in order to make the vibrant alloys, we need an energetic alloy and an ender pearl. Well, how do we make the energetic alloy? That is made with gold redstone and glowstone do we only get one let's have a look so we basically want um gold glowstone and only, only got a few ender pearls left uh, where's redstone should I have a load of that okay now apparently it doesn't matter what order they go in so we're going to put in one redstone we're going to put in one red uh, glowstone and one gold uh, I said it doesn't matter what order they go in, but I've, I've basically put them in, in the same order it was in the recipe. As you can see, it's not using a terrible amount of power. It's not going to be incredibly fast, but it should do the job. And that's the important thing here. I thought it was getting dark for a moment there. So, come on, hurry up. I see it's gone back into its... Uh, mixed mode again. There we go. We have an energetic alloy. We only have one. And I can't remember how many we need. Um, this is still on the wrong thing. Alloy, uh, not the alloy furnace, is it? It's not that we want. It is the electromagnet. Right, let's do some math. So, we need eight nuggets, but we'll get eight nuggets from a single alloy. In order to make one alloy, we need to grab ourselves... Right, so it's just one uh, alloy and one ender pearl. Okay, so we should be able to do that easily. So all we need to do is grab one ender pearl. Uh, let's put all that stuff back. So it is going to be a single alloy and a single ender pearl. Fantastic, fantastic. And then we we break that into nuggets and surround an emerald. And that will give us the vibrant crystal. So let's go ahead and find our emerald. We should have a load of them. We've got 23. Brilliant. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, there we go. Got some XP for that as well. And again, we don't have a crafting 
surface here so we do have to go downstairs so we want to um, split that up and then we surround the emerald with it that gives us our vibrant crystal brilliant you can go back in there till we need you later so what do we need now we need to make ourselves we might get the whole thing built actually looks like it's going pretty quick um two electrical steel electrical steel is made by smelting iron coal powder and silicon uh coal powder pulverized coal so iron coal powder and silicon probably going to need two um so it's going to be where are we Have we got any coal powder in here already coal dust might work there should be silicon as well i could just search for it but i'm too lazy to type that's rubber there's silicon ah now which silicon is it well ender io silicon i assume and uh, and iron was the other one where are you all my iron, my massive, massive stacks of iron that is in here? Okay, screw it. Let's just search for it. There we go, two iron. Let's see if this uh, if this works. I know it's night time. I was going to sleep things off, but we're not using any of the machinery, so nothing should be going down. So, um, silicon, coal dust, and iron. That does actually work with the coal dust as well. Good stuff. So while they're smelting up, what else do we need? Electromagnet. So two of those, which we are working on. And then we need two conductive iron. And that is basically just made with um, iron and redstone. So we need four redstone and four iron. So that's easy enough. So um, should I just be quick and search for it again? I am waiting for the uh, the alloy smelter. So there's not a lot of point rushing. Um, one, two, three, four of the iron. And then redstone was down near the bottom somewhere. Uh, there we go. One, two, three, four. Jobs are good. So there's our first electrical steel. And I guess we can go and sleep. Actually, before we sleep things off, we'll, let's go ahead and start the other stuff smelting up. So this will give us our other electrical steel. And then we want to put in the iron and the redstone. And that's going to work. And we will sleep things off. And I want to go and have a quick look again at the uh, reactor just to see how it's doing now. Because obviously we are using some power on the machines. Need to keep my eye on it. It's not going to explode or anything, which is good. But at the same time, I want to try and keep it uh, not necessarily maxed because I don't want to be burning fuel. The thing is, the more... The sort of... The higher up you have this thing powered, the... Um, less efficient its fuel use so if you don't have to run it at full power don't run it at full power because you're just burning through fuel more quickly um that's still going up pretty significantly um let's try it on 30 again this time oops now it's going down okay so we do have to run it at 20 Whichever, I always click the wrong way. So 50-50 chance and I still get it wrong. Yeah, now it's going up. So the the reactor, does, there was a point where we used to be able to run this reactor at 10% or 20% and it worked fine. So things are changing, people. So this thing should be almost done. It's got one more lot to do, which is great. We'll go out and have a little check of the quarry in a moment. We've got to go out over towards the quarry because I actually want to go and test the electromagnet out once we uh, once we get it up and running. So I believe we actually have to have it on our uh, hotbar for it to work. And uh, the details, I do like this. If you hold down shift on the Ender I.O. stuff, it actually tells you what it does. So it pulls nearby items towards us and we have to shift and right. Now, is that shift plus R and click or is that shift plus right click? I'm guessing it's probably shift plus right click. Yeah, and it says must be powered and active in the hotbar to function. Okay, good stuff. So let's grab that. So we've actually now got all of the um, pieces that we need. At least I think we have. So let's go down here and just get rid of that XP. Let's just go over to the uh, the crafting station. And uh, once again, we need to um, go into... Yep, yeah, we're synchronized. So we want the electromagnet. Mm, got to click in there first. Click on that. And that should be enough to make one. Oh, you're missing.
Mm, okay, maybe it doesn't work and we have to do it manually. Or maybe there's a special crafting table that we have to use. No, no, we can get the electromagnet. Just doesn't work with um, any eye for some reason. Um, so we've got that electromagnet. We should be able to charge it up using the uh, MFE, I think. Ah, no, we can't charge it up using the MFE. So how do we charge it then? Uses RF. So we've got to find a way to put RF into it. How do we put RF into it? This is probably going to be my next question for you guys. So we've got the thing built. Can we put it into, into one of these things? These don't have a slot in them, do they? No. Okay. So we've got our electromagnet. I'm sure you guys have probably already commented, so I need to go through and read the comments. But we need to find a way now to charge this up. That's going to be the next job. But I did say I was going to go out and check the quarry. And I still intend to do that. Uh, we'll go down to this floor. And let us go and see if we've got anything uh, nice out of it this time around. Uh, this is still the wrong floor. Uh, so I think things are actually going quite well. I'm quite happy with it. We've got that up and running. And uh, I do want to build some more stuff using Ender.io. Now we've gone and built the alloy, uh, the alloy smelter. Um, let me know. What other stuff can we build with Ender.io? What is is there a book for Ender.io? I know like sometimes with open blocks and thumbcraft, you can, you can get a, a useful book that tells you how to make stuff. Is there the same sort of thing for Ender.io? But what should we be looking to make with that? This is using quite a lot of peat. It's getting down there, though. Let's have a quick uh, a quick look down at the bottom, see what we find, see what level we're down to, make sure we don't hit the ground too hard. And we are down at level 26, it's getting there, look we found some more emeralds, uh, there's a fair bit of yellow right down here actually, which is good because we're going to need that for the reactor, especially at the rate with which it is using power. And the main reason we're building this electromagnet is so we can actually get up here and start harvesting this stuff out of the ceiling. Because we're not, we want to try and get as much stuff out of this quarry as possible. Let's get back over here and see what's in there. So, what do we have? Oh, we've got some more yellowite. We've got some more bees, and we've got some some gravel and some iron. It's not particularly exciting, but it will do. There's a skeleton around somewhere because I can hear it. So, I guess one thing that we really need to do is come up with a solution for the problem of using that energy. It does seem that. Um, with a lot of stuff connected to the reactor, it's still drawing energy even when it's not being used, which is potentially problematic. Uh, the other option, of course, is we build a bigger reactor. And somebody, I think it was Mike, suggested that once the quarry's done, we should just go ahead and build the uh, build a really big reactor inside the quarry pit. And I actually quite like that idea. It's definitely something that is on the agenda. But what I want to know for now, guys, is how do I get that electromagnet charged up so we can start using it? And uh, I'll leave that one with you guys, and I'll see you on the next video. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you are still enjoying uh, Feed the Beast Infinity. I'm still having a really, really good time playing it, and I'm, I'm discovering lots of stuff and building lots of new stuff that I haven't built before, so it's quite exciting. But uh, I will see you guys next time, so thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye for now.